Hi everyone, it's Miss Olson, and I wanted to um, review the color wheel with you today um, so that we can use color theory, um, color schemes, and color blending in our um, sketchbook cover design today. So last time you were here, you used the elements of art in your own creative way to create a name design. And um, today we are going to um, review the way to use watercolors and how to create three different types of blends at your um, seat. So um, the first thing is our watercolor trays have a new setup. So I'll show you that exciting thing first. Um, the watercolor trays now have warm colors in a row, cool colors, and neutral colors. This is red violet. It's both warm and cool. So you can use it for warm color schemes and cool color schemes. So that's why it's in this little corner here. Um, and the reason for this, my friends, is that um, we are going to be um, keeping them on the squares so that we know which colors are out and where they are. I found that when we had them just all over the tray, it was hard to find certain colors and know if we're out of them or not. Um, so we just had lots of watercolors everywhere. So um, if you're this helper today, I'll show you how to pass out those materials. Um, you will go over to this um, shelf over at the back sink here, and you can find where it says watercolor. We'll open that up. And at the bottom here, they're all stacked up nice and neat. Um, you can get out the color tray that you need. You're gonna get this stack and pass them out accordingly. I'm just gonna show you now with the orange ones though. So if I'm passing out the orange table trays, I'm going to put one at one wing and one at the other. Now, when you're passing out, the tray might wiggle around a little bit. Um, if the colors are off of their spot when you get to your seat, you can just move them back into place so that they're there. All right, now that we know about how to place our watercolors out, if you're that helpful here, um, I also want to let you know what we're doing today. So you're gonna to try to create three different color blends. One color blend is going to be a primary color blend. Primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, as we've already discussed a little bit. You can blend yellow with blue to make green, and you can see that on the wheel as well, blue and yellow make green. Um, you can also blend primary colors, red and blue to make purple. You can see that here as well, blue and red make purple. And then lastly, you can also blend two primary colors, yellow and red, to make orange. So you can see that here too, yellow and red make orange. Great. So this reference is in the back of the room. It will be all year if you want to look at that. And um, this color wheel will also show that. So if you look at the color wheel, between yellow and red is orange, between yellow and blue is purple, and between blue and red is, I mean, green. <laughs> Yellow and blue is purple, I was just testing you. Yellow and blue is green. And between blue and red is purple. So yellow and red make orange, yellow and blue make green, and blue and red make purple. So that this reference and that one is there for you to use for color mixing. Um, and then last but not least, other than doing two primary colors, I want to see if you can mix one primary and one secondary to make a tertiary color. So that means you might mix primary color yellow with tertiary color green to make yellow green. Or you might mix yellow with orange to make yellow orange. You might mix primary color red with secondary color purple to make red purple, so or red violet. So these are the tertiary colors. This reference is also in the back of the room. You'll know that you're mixing two colors that can mix on the wheel, primary and secondary, if they're next to each other. So that would make them analogous. So analogous colors are when they are next to each other on the wheel. So red and orange could mix, they're analogous. Blue and purple could mix. Blue and green would make blue-green. Um, so I'm looking for you to try out a primary color mixing a primary with a secondary that's next to it. And then last but not least, you're, I'm gonna show you how to mix a tint and blend that, or a shade. Tints are when colors, that's value changes, 
Tints happen when colors are mixed with white. And shades happen when colors are mixed with black. So tints and shades. I'm going to show you how to blend those as well today. So um, let's look. To blend two colors together, first of all, we're always going to leave the watercolors on the tray when we're painting because um, so everybody can use them. And if you pick it up, it's going to make your hand messy. It's going to make your table more messy if you take it off the tray. So just leave it on the tray. Everybody can use it that way. Now I have to use this paint that I just wasted. Okay. So we started with blue. All right. So I started with blue. I'm going to fill up half of this letter S. I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to now fill the other half. I'm going to wiggle my brush in the watercolor to get it wet. Fill up the other half with red. I'm not using too much water. If you use too much water, your paper is going to break. This is not watercolor paper, so we have to be careful. Now I'm going to mix them together where they meet. So I rinse my brush. Always rinse your brush between colors. And I'm going to wiggle the brush together where they're touching, and it's going to get um, purple. All right, I'm actually going to show you on another paper. All right, so we can also mix a primary color yellow. I'm going to fill up half of a shape with yellow. I'm going to mix, fill up half of the shape with blue. Now to blend them together in the middle, I'm going to rinse my brush off. Make sure you're rinsing. When you're rinsing, we swirl and wipe. We don't tap our brush. And the reason that we don't tap our brush is so that the paint doesn't splatter on people or artwork. So don't tap your brush. Just swirl it and then wipe it on the side. All right. So to mix these together in the center, I just rinsed my brush. I'm going to wiggle my brush where the two are meeting. And now where they're meeting, I'm getting a yellow green or a green. So I have yellow fading into green into blue. Now I'm going to show you another one right here. I'm going to show you how to do um, a primary and secondary. So my primary color could be yellow. I could just continue on from there. Primary color could be yellow. And then my next color, secondary, could be orange. And where they're touching in the center, I'm going to rinse my brush and then try not to get too much water on my brush and just blend them and mix them together where they're meeting. And that's going to make that third tertiary color, which is yellow-orange. So I have orange, yellow-orange, then yellow, all blended together. Um, so that was two examples there for you. And now I'm last but not least going to show you how to do um, a tint and a shade. So I could get any color. Let's say I get blue. And if you use more water on your brush, it's going to get lighter. So I'm going to start really dark with less water and more watercolor. And then to make it get lighter, I could either mix it with white to make a tint, or I could just use less water with watercolor to make it get lighter and lighter and lighter gradually. Lighter and lighter and lighter. If I want it to get darker at the top, I could also just use regular blue. So I have blue, mixing with water to get lighter and lighter and lighter into a tint on my paper here until it becomes white. All right, so that's a tint. You could also have grabbed some white and tried to mix it together. Now I'm going to show you a shade. So I'm going to grab red. Start this off with some red up here. Really wiggle your brush into the paint if you want that color to be darker and bold. And then I'm now going to get some black. A little bit of black goes a long way, so just dip the tip of your brush into the black. It's really strong color, so it doesn't need to be dipped too much. I'm going to rinse my brush. Don't just kind of squeeze out the tip of your brush if you need to. So I just squeezed it out a little bit to get the extra water off. And now I'm just going to 
mix it together where the two are meeting to get my shade. And look, I made a shade over here too, which is okay. If you may make a mistake and you want to take something away, you can just rinse your brush, squeeze it out so the brush is dry, and you can pull something away. Now this paper kind of dries with little white dots on it, which is kind of cool. I saw some students experimenting yesterday with um, making little galaxies out of it. So you can kind of experiment with what happens when you start with a really dark shade and then the little white dots of the paper are popping through. It kind of makes a cool effect. So I'm just kind of experimenting now. You can experiment with just painting as well once you get your primary color mixture finished, your primary and secondary color mixture and your tint and your shade color mixture finish, you can experiment with different um, painting techniques as well there and fill up your space. All right, I hope you have a wonderful painting day and I'm gonna be picking helpers based on who was paying attention and listening and looking during this demonstration. Have a great art class.